Pilot 10, again, focuses around hyperacute workflows, but this time we're focusing on sepsis. Anna, our biomedical engineer, is back on stage, who we've just seen, and from day one, returning as well, um, is Professor Josep Redon, Director and Head of the Institute of Medicine, Hospital Clinico, University of Valencia. Team, stage is yours. Oh, then the pilot number 10 is devoted to the use of real-time location systems in to improve uh, the time of uh, attend patients with sepsis care in the emergency department. It is clear that emergency departments are the, are the most complex in the hospitals due to the frequent overflow, the difficulties to monitor this, and also because they are facing with patients that are life-threatening and they need to be covered one rapid treatment. And one of these cases is sepsis. Sepsis is uh, the impact of infections in several organs of the systems that have a very high rates of morbidity and mortality. It is very well established that, uh, well, it's uh, recommended that they start the treatment as soon as possible, mainly in the first, if it's possible, first or second hour when the patients arrive to the hospital. Of course, today it's uh, difficult to know if uh, what is happening in one emergency department in the treat of these patients and with the RTLS system, the uh, objective is to look for what are the bottlenecks and then in order to reduce door to treatment time. This is what uh, is uh, trying to do, uh, to test in this uh, pilot uh, number 10. The design is uh, uh, two steps. The first was the monitoring phase. One pre-monitoring phase pre-install pre the RTL system. In this case, we get uh, data for timestamp of the um, electronic medical records of our hospital. And in the second, once the RTLS is established, we are also collected information from the electronic medical records, but also from the RTLS uh, system. And in this case, we are going to monitor uh, several times that you will see more explicit and more detailed in the next uh, slides. But this will be collected in the pre-monitoring uh, step and uh, during the monitoring and in during the monitoring, as I commented, we are going to confront the information that is uh, collected by the timestamps in the electronic or medical records that, of course, is retrospective, and in the RTLS. We select uh, adult subjects, uh, both sexes, that in the area of triage have a very high risk of having a sepsis. And then we exclude for the analysis those subjects that don't sign the consent form for sure, but also in those ones has been admitted the sepsis was not confirmed. Here you will see what is the flow of data and then you will see in the left side the information that is coming to the database from the electronic medical records and in the other side you are seeing how are the data that are coming that are collected from our hospital but collected here in the Philips facilities. Then we put all together and afterwards has been analyzed following the possibility that get to access the databases and analysis taking in account all the requirements of the GDPR. Here you will see what is the structure of our emergency department. You will see in grey in the left side upper part that the admission after go the triage in red and after this is one area in which the patients are confronted for first time with the physicians. And once that happened this, or pass directly to the area of observation, of observation that is the area in which all the process of diagnosis and treatment started. And then we have also the possibility that the patient go to the radiology department that you will see in blue. Here it is what is expected in the flow of the patients, the pathway of the patients. This is from admission, they go to the triage. After the triage, 
go to one area in which is the first contact with the physician and afterwards go this uh, area in uh, color in gray color in which the area is in when the all the blood samples has been taken and all the procedures of treatment antibiotics and infusion of uh, in, in intravenous lines of liquids are started and then finally these patients after several hours in this observation area they will go to the critical care units or to the wards for hospitalization. You will see here in this case what are the data that we obtain in the pre-monitoring area. In the pre-monitoring area and study we analyzed 209 patients and then you will see what is the average of uh, time that uh, the uh, patients uh, um, follow during all the process in that. And then as uh, interesting is to see what is the amount of uh, time that is consumed from the triage to the first contact with the doctor and from the first contact to the doctor to the observation and, mm, mm, room. Because if you look at here are the time that take from the admission to that the patients start with the real treatment antibiotic is practically more or less two hours. But uh, one thing that this is uh, really to see is the variability that exists in times. And then this is what we can obtain for the time stamp of the electronic medical records. But uh, at the time to introduce the monitoring in uh, this RTLS system that this is going to be modified and will be presented by Anna here. Okay, Anna, this is your floor. Thank you. Um, hi again, so this is uh, Anna Litang from Philips. Uh, so now you have seen the sepsis pathway uh, and what it looks like um, in the EMR of the Valencian Hospital. Let's take a look now at the real-time location system that was deployed in the second phase of the project. We have used the same system from Centrac that I spoke about in the, in the pilot of stroke management. We first created a dedicated network of radio hubs that receives the location data. Then we defined the areas of interest that we want to look at and we installed our beacons to create those areas. In this project, we only monitored patients so only patient acts that are placed in the hospital wristbands uh, were used. This is what our floor plan looks like at the installation of RTLS. We have room level accuracy or even smaller. If you look closely, we are able to segment the corridors and divide rooms to have better understanding of the paths of the patient. Again, we can only monitor them in the areas where RTLS is installed. If they've moved out of these colored areas, we are not able to see them. Most sepsis patients in the ED are brought to triage. This is where they'll be identified, identified as possible sepsis patients and provided with the RTLS wristband. The patient will then be taken to the consultation room, followed by the observation area, and finally be moved to another ward at the hospital. At this point, the RTLS wristband is removed from the, the patient and the pathway is deemed as complete. After processing to filter patient data from all the RTLS data and overcoming missing data events of patient paths, we applied process mining techniques to be able to determine the real movements of the patients and detect potential deviations and bottlenecks. As you can see in the graph on the left, there are three locations outside the expected pathway. These are the waiting room, the ivory room and radiology department. This will have an impact on the pathway of the patient and depending on the frequency of these events, they can even represent a bottleneck. Now, when we confront the results obtained with RTLS and with EMR data, we can see that there are significant differences. For example, we see that triage almost always ends in EMR around three minutes and a half before the patient is moved out of the room. This becomes, this has happens because the nurse has finished the assessment of the patient and registers it in the EMR, but then the patient has to wait for a technician to be transported to the consultation room. The biggest difference we observed is in the admission to hospitalization where in the MR the patient is admitted to ward one hour earlier than the, phys the physical transfer of the patient. This shows how the 
how the way the EMR is used can greatly impact the results uh, of the pathway indicators and lead to wrongful conclusions. If we now confront the main results, we can see that there's a positive trend that shows improvement after the deployment of RTLS. We also see that the data from RTLS shows there's a significant increase in the transition time from consultation to observation that is not shown in the EMR data. If we go back to the initial paths gotten with RTLS data, we see that the common deviation is the visit to radiology before moving to the observation area. The visit to radiology is what is causing this increase in transfer time and would have been easily detected it wouldn't have been easily detected without RTLS. As expected, the deviations that occur during the path of a patient in the ED have an impact on the total length of stay. But when we look at the results before the installation of RTLS, it's still possible to observe a clear improvement. Overall, we define that it is possible to characterize and improve acute care workflows in the emergency department using RTLS. We showed how RTLS can help us identify bottlenecks and deviations from the pathway. RTLS is a more reliable source of information when it comes to transitions of patients through the pathway that can result in minute level improvements and can have great impact on the care of the patients. In this pilot, the awareness and the involvement of all the staff during the deployment of RTLS has shown to also have a positive impact on the improvement of the results. Thank you. Amazing. So, uh, like uh, like other conditions, time to treatment is really critical, especially for sepsis, where yeah, it's uh, it's clear and it is very well established, and there are several guidelines, in which it recommended that uh, in the first hour that the patient arrive to the hospital, start with the antibiotic therapy and with the infusion of an intravenous line and liquids. Right. Because uh, this is the way that reduces the risk uh, for uh, renal insufficiency or the necessity of go to the critical care units because they start with uh, a pulmonary uh, lung insufficiency mm -hmm. and then also reduce mortality. It is very well established that uh, one hour will be the ideal point to start uh, the treatment. But of course, sepsis could happen also post-surgery, right? But that's a different mm -hmm. area, and those are different conditions. Yeah, this is different because usually yeah. the patient is in a ward, yeah. and then if he's recognized it earlier by the nurses or the doctors of the surgeons, then usually people from the medical departments go there as soon as possible. So theoretically, the same thinking could be applied in a way, right? Yeah, and concerning the diagnosis and treatment of sepsis, okay. Okay. But in this case, uh, emergency department, as I commented, yeah. is the most complex in the hospital. Yeah. You can imagine the amount of people that is arriving to the emergency department in one hospital. Yes. And uh, for example, in our hospital, that this is uh, uh, well, it's a university hospital, but this is in uh, the middle of the city. We are receiving in between 450 and 500 visits uh, to the emergency department daily. Daily. And then the mm. percent of uh, sepsis around uh, in one year will be collected uh, approximately in between 150 and 200 patients with I sepsis. See. Yeah. <laughs> so additional tasks for the nurse, Anna, um, it, could that potentially impede their ability to frankly do their job? No, this, uh, we're talking about the placement of the wristband. Um, this is also something that they do at triage with uh, when they do the triage of the patient and they do the, the, the assessment of the state of the patient. Yeah. So they already place a wristband. So this is not really considered an extra step at this point. And then after the, the placement of the wristband, there's really nothing that they need to do. Uh, besides taking care that uh, uh, the, the sensor is not covered by uh, thick blankets or so. Right, right. So not, uh, there's uh, really no extra uh, um, steps that they have to, yeah. to take. Okay. And, uh, and one thing that uh, I think that is interesting to remark is that, for example, from the installation of the RTLS in our uh, system, mm -hmm. people know that there are some uh, something of monitoring. Yeah, yeah. And then it seems to be that can even 
just only this influence. The awareness. But of course, the, the best information is coming from the RTLS because it's telling you exactly where the patient is. Right. Because the time stamp of the doctor in MRI, well, give the order, but uh, maybe the patient is waiting 15, 20 minutes sure. before the transfer. That's right. Yeah. That this is uh, absolutely uh, relevant. And one thing too is that it's very simple once uh, that uh, the system is still, because there were one year and a half there, nobody touched anything and still working. Okay. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's remarkable. Yeah, yeah. That's so, the, <laughs> so the, the, the system will help oh, you know, get us conscious and awareness of the status yeah, of yeah. The, the patient, let's say, throughput in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but what about the bottlenecks? How do we, how do we handle those? Well, that's the tough question, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Bottlenecks, like we also saw in the previous pilot, they can be as simple as um, creating a box of medication uh, that it's always available or changing the placement of uh, things within the pathway. Um, but it can also just be uh, bringing awareness to the staff of what's really happening. Yeah. And um, if they know that um, there's a, a patient that it's always waiting uh, for a technician to be transported from one place to the other, yeah. then maybe they can do something about it, uh, either by changing yeah. staff, uh, increasing staff uh, members, um, or actually changing the, the workflow at the hospital. So there's a lot of things that you can do to, to tackle bottlenecks. Um, it's, it's also very interesting, the insights that uh, RTLX brings to how things are done at the um, at the hospital and how professionals interact with the EMR yeah. and see uh, yeah. how sometimes they yeah. use EMR uh, proactively and mm -hmm. then uh, also sometimes retrospectively. So mm -hmm. that can also help to change these kind of, yeah. uh, of things. Even that from the triage, uh, the patients are classified by colors. Yeah. Even that of this is not enough. Yeah. It's not <laughs> enough because not all, for example, the, if he's red, for sure that the patient is just in cardiac arrest or so on. Sure. But this is uh, yellow, that this is uh, critical patients, but not as much. And then in these cases, it is necessary that uh, maybe will be identified much more rapidly yeah. what is happening, because if not, uh, as Anna say, right. there are delays that are not dependent of uh, sometimes of the action of the doctors. Right. Sometimes too, eh? that sure. I don't, I don't take <laughs> out <laughs> the, that I could print for everybody. But <laughs> this so is true. In a way, you're actually saying this can support continuous improvement. In, in yeah, the, uh, sure. Yeah. Right. Fantastic. Thank you very much. We'll again take a short break and we'll be back uh, shortly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.